We want to greet you in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is in Christ. We thank God that he has awarded unto us this privileged opportunity to come before you on this blessed day. It's good to be alive. Oh, bless the wonderful name of Jesus. I said it's good to be alive, and at this particular time, I want to issue unto you and declare and decree this is our call to worship. And our call to worship is a very familiar passage of scripture that is found over and over in the Bible. And you'll find this in the Bible again and again when you read it. It's called the Pearl of Psalms. The Pearl of Psalms, and that's Psalms 23. And I just want to highlight where it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I want to stop right there and just drop this on you. I want you to notice that the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. Five words. The reason why it says the, because it's a definite article, which means there's none before and none after him. Which means you don't need nobody else when you got Jesus as your shepherd. You don't need Buddha. You don't need Confucius. You don't need Mohammed. Amen, somebody. When you've got Jesus, hello somebody, yeah, yeah. he is your shepherd. Yeah. A shepherd cares for the sheep. A shepherd feeds the sheep. A shepherd tends to the sheep. A shepherd will pick up the sheep and carry the sheep. Because a shepherd is aware of the fact that the sheep are, cannot watch over themselves. The shepherd is also the one that shouts out when the wolf is coming because the wolf will devour the sheep. And so the shepherd is like a watchman. He not only cares for you, he not only takes care of you, he not only feeds you, but he watches over you. How many of y'all glad out there that he watched over you? Somebody shout, yes sir, because I would have been done in 21. Hello somebody. But the Lord helped you to get through 21, and here you are in 22. Why? Because danger seen and unseen. The shepherd had his hand over you. Now notice now, notice the five words, the Lord is, not was, but is, which means he has been, he is right now, and forever will be. That's good news because there are a lot of folk who start out with you. They were, but they show sure not now. Hello, somebody, but the Lord is. Notice the word Lord, Lord is capital, which means the one who is all sufficient. The one who has everything I need. The one I can rely on. The one I can depend on. The one I can trust in. Are y'all listening to me? The Lord. Not a Lord. The Lord. And the Bible says he is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God our Father. The Lord is mine. Here we go. My first person pronoun singular, my, which means that he's so personal as a shepherd, he'll come right alongside you. Yeah. Yes, he will. He's my shepherd. Everybody can't flow with you like that. Everybody doesn't know you like that. Everybody is not going to walk with you like that. But the good news is he is my shepherd. And I can claim him that he is mine and I am his. And I don't know how you feel about that. But in the midst of this crazy, sin, sordid, sick, reckless, wayward, ungodly, selfish world, it's good to know that the Lord is my shepherd. We're going to stop right there because I feel something pushing me right there. But that's our call to worship scripture. Amen. Today, if you receive that, give God praise. Put a comment out there and say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I want to also encourage you, amen, those of you that are viewing online. We're going to ask if you would be so kind as to push the share button on your mobile device. That's right. If you've ever been to social media, I'm talking to you. If you ever looked on a Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, if you ever could, went to Google, I need you right now to push the share button right on your mobile device. Every time you push the share button, you give the devil a fit. And I don't know how you feel about that, but Satan is not my friend. And he's always pulling and toying and, amen, tantalizing us. And so let's upset him today. Let's make him wish he had not come to church. Hello, somebody. Push the share button on your mobile device. Share with somebody. When you push that share button, I promise you, 
Somebody's going to be glad that you did. That's right. Somebody's going to say, you know what? I needed to hear that word. I needed, amen, to feel the presence of God. I, I needed that encouragement. I needed that comfort. I even needed Reverend Tyler to get over toes. Hello, somebody. I need that. Somebody shout out, I need that. Don't you try to determine and predetermine what's best for somebody else. Amen. You let them determine it. Send on to them. That's right. Send it to them. Send it to them. Push to share. Push to share. We are live, living, and in color here at the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. Somebody shout, we are live. We are live. We know there are those. Amen. The weather is unpleasant. Amen. I get that. But let me help somebody right about here. Quit playing with God. Let me try one more time. Quit playing with God. I have been around... Lexington long enough to see where the traffic was packed out. Brother George, amen, when UK was playing, amen, I've come out of the church out of the same parking lot, rode right out of here, and I'm not mad that you're a UK fan, although I'm a UOL fan, but I can recall on many occasions I got caught in UK traffic. Yeah. And oftentimes when I got caught, Sister Thelma, it wasn't always when it was sunshine. I've been caught in the traffic in the rain. I've been caught in the traffic in the snow. I've been caught in the traffic when it was nice. I've been caught in the traffic when it wasn't nice. What do you say, preacher? We do what we want to do. And we go where we want to go. And I can understand that when it's, amen, it's, the weather is not pleasant, amen. And I, I get it, I get it. You know, you have to be careful. I understand that. But how many of y'all know, amen, we do what we want to do. Just not too many TikToks before I stand before you right here. Here we go. Somebody ain't going to like what I'm going to say, Brother Sam, but I'm going to say it anyhow because I'm just that type of preacher. Not too long ago, about 12 hours plus, I was sitting in a hotel and it was packed out. Oh, yeah, it was a nice time. And we come in, all of those who came out. And I looked to my left, I looked to my right, I looked to the north, I looked to the south, I looked to the east, and I looked to the west, and I saw a whole lot of church folk there. Amen. And it wasn't a problem for them to be there. And now I'm standing up here Sunday morning, and I'm wondering whether you're saying for God. Hello, somebody. Something wrong with that type of religion. I can't hear nobody. I said, something wrong with that type of religion. Quit playing with God. A time is going to come, you're going to want to be in church. Your time is going to come. You're going to want to come to the house of prayer. A time is going to come. You're going to want to get up and get out of bed. A time is going to come when you're going to have to call on the Lord. And I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I'm glad to be in his service one more time. Amen. So keep pushing the shut button. That's right. We want to encourage you, my brothers and my sisters, my sisters and my brothers. We want to encourage you to visit us at, that's right, ambc1840.org. AMBC1840.org. I want you to go to our website, visit our site, like us on social media. I want to thank God for the progressive family that is watching us abroad. I want to thank God for those with a, within our international missions that is watching us abroad. I want to thank God for the Antioch Church family, for those who just couldn't get out. Amen. Because of sickness or impediment or whatever it may have been. I want to say unto you, we love you with Jesus' joy. We're praying for those of you, amen, that are sick and afflicted. For those in convalescent centers and in nursing homes. We're praying for you. We're praying for you that are incarcerated behind prison walls. We're praying for you. That's right. We're praying for you that are distressed and depressed. We're praying for you. Antioch has been called into prayer. This church has been called into prayer because I believe that prayer still works. Amen. Amen. I want you also to sow a seed into this ministry. You can do that very simply by downloading this app. It's safe and secure. Givelify, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y dot com. Givelify dot com. And because of your online support, let me pause right here. I don't want to get emotional. But because of you, that's right, you. We are able to come back week after week. We're able to continue with ministry and mission. We're able to carry on the good news of Jesus Christ. We're able to provide the best of our ability because of your financial contribution. Yeah. It takes money to do ministry. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. And because of you, we're able to be here right now. So we love you, the Lord. Want to pray for Reverend Ferris family. Many don't know Reverend Ferris, but Reverend Ferris is one of our delegates in our convention. He pastored the Clark Grove Missionary Baptist Church. 
for over half a century there in Gary, Indiana. He will be eulogized next Saturday there in Gary, Indiana. You pray for the Clark Grove family, to the Evans family, and to all abroad throughout the state of Indiana and throughout our country. This is the brother, that's right, of the one and only, you got it, the songster, Reverend Evans. Y'all remember Reverend Evans? That's right, that's his brother. <coughs> pray for the Evans family. The Lord's gonna bless you in a special way. Also remember Pastor Edward Holmes, who called me the other day, went to take his mother some groceries, went to stop by to get some food, went by and found his mother, she had had a heart attack and a stroke. And I spoke with him the other day, he said, Reverend, he said, Mother, it don't look well. He said, I'm here. And he said, Reverend, tell the church to pray for me. Because they're asking me, should I pull the plug? Because right now, it's the machines that's keeping her going. He said, I got a tough decision. And I said, Brother Pastor, you hang in there. Been there. I'm not where you are because that's your mother. But I know what it's like to be standing over a mother who's on her last tick of the talk. And I said, I'm going to pray that the Lord will lead you. So Pastor Holmes and to the entire Renaissance Missionary Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan, and to the entire Holmes family, we want you to know here at the Antioch Church that we're praying for you, praying that God will keep you in such a time as this. And not only are we praying for the Holmes family and for the Evans family, but we're also praying for the John Walls family. We utilized Brother John Walls the other day. Wasn't but a handful here, but we went on and done what the Lord said. And we want to encourage you to let you know that God is able. I said God is able to keep you in spite of it all. God is able. I thank God for the handful that is present today here at the Antioch Church that thought it not robbery to come out. You pray with us and pray for us as we continue to do what the Lord has asked us to do. We also want to say to you, God bless you, we see your shout outs. Amen. We see your shout outs. Sister Sherry Carter, God bless you. I can't see every name because so many are being shared to different venues. The web developer, she tells me this all the time. I said, well, I want to see all the names. She said, Reverend, you can't see all the names because people are sharing with others who are sharing with others who are sharing with others and groups are sharing with others. And so you can't see all the names, but there are plethora, there are multitudes that are watching this ministry and sharing this ministry. So if I don't call your name, please don't take it personal. I just can't see all of them. But we thank God for Sister Sherry Carter praying for you, Sister Sherry. Amen. Heard you was under the weather, but God is able. Amen. Sister Maria Myers, we're praying for you. God is able. Sister Kathy Johnson Green, we're praying for you. God is able. Sister Royce Connor, Tracy Barton, and others, we're praying for you because God is able. Sister Sherry Vinegar, we're praying for you because God is able. And to many others, y'all just keep pushing the share button. Amen. Sister Carolyn Madison, we're praying for you because God is able. How many of y'all know God is able? Amen. I say, how many of y'all know God is able? Amen. Amen. Glad to see Brother Rob all the way from Ohio. Amen. Here with us. Let us church say amen all the way from Ohio. Amen. If somebody can come all the way from Ohio, we ought to give God praise for that. Amen. amen. God bless you. I want you to know that God is able. To you, you, yes, and even you. Amen. We received a phone call that, amen, Brother Shea Barnes could be with us today due to the fact of weather in Franklin. But he said, Pastor, pray for me. Pray for my family. We're praying for you. We're also praying for Sister Ray Allen. Yeah. Sister Ray Lynn lost her mother yesterday. Yeah. One of the members here of the Antioch Church. We went out in the hallway and got into a small circle. And Sister Kelly, we had prayer with her. Because I'm the type of fella, you know, folks say, well, pray for me. No, we're going to pray now. Yeah. Hello, somebody. And we took our time to pray. So, Sister Ray, we want you to know that the pastor and the congregation of Antioch, we are here for you. Amen. We're here for your family. Let us know what we can do. And what we cannot do, God can do. Hello, somebody. Amen. 
but want you to know that God is able. So you hang in there, Sister Ray. That's right, God, keep pushing the share button. This is not entertainment. This is worship. This is ministry. So we thank God for you. May the Lord God bless you real good. A verse of this stuff, and then we're going to ask, amen, the brother George Mobley We get the mic and be prepared to come. And he's going to offer a prayer. Pass me now. Oh, <laughs> 
just before we get ready to pray, I want Nico to come and grab this mic here. Amen. And just shout out our cash out. Amen. For those of you, type that in the comment section. Sister Jessica and others, if you'll type the cash out, amen, in the comment section, just give them a shout out, Nico, and let them know that you can also cash out when you want to give to the ministry of this mission of Antioch. There are many who are utilizing online giving in so many different ways. And cash out is the new way. Amen. It's another way of giving. So, Sister Nico, amen. Thank you for being here this morning. Amen. Filling in like you normally do. Good morning, Antioch and Church morning. family. Uh, the church does also have a cash app account. Um, it is dollar sign AMBC 1840. And that also comes to the church. Thank you. Amen. Dollar sign AMBC. 1840. Somebody put that in the comment section. Dollar sign AMBC 1840. I'm getting you ready because when your income tax comes, hello somebody. Come on, talk to me. If the Lord blessed you to get anything back, don't you know some folk don't get nothing back? Yeah. Hello somebody. Matter of fact, some folk got to pay. But the Lord blesses you to get something back. You better sow a seed, amen. Sow a seed. I promise you, the Lord will bless you real good. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask if Deacon and Training, Brother George Overley, amen, will come. He's going to lead us in prayer. Take your time. Good morning, church. Bow your hands, please. Father, as we come to you as humble as we can, Father, come with forgiveness. Call it on your name. Yeah, pray, pray, pray. Take your time. Today is the day where we come out to worship. Even though some couldn't make it today, Father, our hearts are all with you, Father God. Well, because we all have sin and fall short of the glory of God, Father. So we're coming to you as humble as we can, Father. And we <laughs> for your forgiveness, Father. Pray. As we go forth out into the world today, Father God. Even though the weather might be dead, Father God. Well, let us still have the glory of you in our hearts and in this beautiful yeah. day, Father God. You gave us this day to worship you, Father God. You gave us this day to keep us forth, Father God. Well, oh, change yeah. all the time, my God, but you never change. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. You hear it from the beginning, you hear it in the middle, and you'll be here. Oh, there's never no end with you, Father God. Yeah. But your glory stretches all far, 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 far. Real, real, real. So keep coming, Father God. We pray for the Lord for the sick and shut in and left out, Father God. Today is when we live in these, Father. It's going to be cold out there, Father. Wrap your warm arms around somebody. Yeah. Day, Father, family, families, Father God. Even though, even though life still goes on, Father God, we have to leave, we have to, we have to law. And Father God, some people just didn't get out of bed this morning, Father God. But bless that family that went to their knees and prayed for them today, Father God, as we sit here representing our families, Father God. Because we have, we've hurt and we are lost, Father God. We've come to you. We know where the light of the tunnel is, Father God. So we look to the light and the glory of you, Father God. So as we come to the flow, Come to a close. I just want to say thank you for your heavenly word and your heavenly just just blessing us, Father. All you do is just bless us, Father. Just keep coming back and forth, Father God. You've given us the strength and endure. There's no more that you can ask, Father. As I was praying now, there's an angel praying for me, Father. You tell you what we need and what we want. Because I don't know oh, what yeah. want, Father God. But you do. And that's the glory back heaven of God that looks high, looks low everywhere, Father. Father, you created. Love you your name. I say amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. And they all said, Amen. Amen. I'm going to impose upon Malachi to play just an instrumental selection before we come with the word. I'm not going to hold you long, but I want to encourage our audience to continue pushing the share button. Somebody's going to be blessed. Go to Antioch Baptist Church, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Share this morning's message, this worship service with somebody who's on the verge of giving up. Some child that don't have a father needs to hear this. Some mother that is praying for a child needs to hear this. Somebody just received some very, very shocking news. Heart drenching. You need to hear this. Share with your cousins. Share with your friends. There's a lot of crime, old crime. Not just black on black crime, but crime on crime. Amen. They're trying to stigmatize us to make it look like we're the only ones dying. No, we're not. Amen. No, we're not. Yeah. There's a lot of shooting. There's a lot of calamity and disaster. We're praying for those in Mayfield, Kentucky, Bowling Green in Western Kentucky, where the tornado came through and devastated homes and churches and businesses. Lives were taken. What are you saying, preacher? Count your blessing. Yeah. Amen. Name them one by one. Amen. You ain't that bad. A tornado could come through here and swoop you up. Amen. I'm talking to you, tough guy. I'm talking to you, Miss Big Stuff. What are you saying, preacher? Everybody needs a church home. Amen. I said everybody needs a church home. Yeah. And so I want to encourage you, whether you're young or old, black or white, all of God's children are precious in His sight. Amen. Keep reaching out to somebody. Don't do it for me. Reach out to somebody because somebody reached out to you. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. And just keep sharing. Glad to see all of you today on this beautiful Sunday. Again, wouldn't it be something if the Lord came back right now? He said, so blessed is that servant when I come. When I find him or her doing my will. I try to stay busy for him, church, because I don't know when he's coming. He's coming. Amen. I don't Amen. know when, but when he does, I pray that he catches me doing some good. What Amen. about you? Amen. Oh, yeah. Bless the Lord. We're going to now turn our attention to uh, Maestro this morning, uh, Brother Malachi, who comes from a strong background of musicians and family throughout Christianity and throughout our community. God has blessed him with a unique gift. We thank God for Brother Mal. Give him a hand, church. Give him, come on, church. Amen. He can be out there. Come on, come on. Keep it going. He can be out there doing something else. But we have a young man here in the church. And Brother Malachi, whatever the Lord leads you to do, we're going to turn the service over to you. Instrumental selection. Malachi Mouse. Thank you. 
got the bridge from Malachi. Amen. 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 You can stand with us now for the next few fleeting moments to the book of Genesis. We ask that you would gather your attention. The book of Genesis, something I've shared, I want to share with you. I've shared it before, but I want to share with a different twist. In Genesis, amen, if you'll stand as we reverence the word of God, when you go to court, they say, all right. When the judge walk, well, judge don't even look at the audience. Everybody just gets up out of respect to the office. Amen. How much more should we not respect the word of God Amen. in the house of God? Yeah. The time is going to come. You're going to want to stand and not be able to. Right. Amen. So as we stand to honor the word of God, the reading in Genesis chapter 49, I want to call your attention to the collective verse, verses 28 through 33. Genesis is the book. And the chapter is 49. And the verse couched in the biblical ancient story is verse 28. All these are the 12 tribes of Israel. And this is what their father spake to them. And he blessed them. And he blessed each one accordingly to his own blessing. Then he charged them and said to them, I am to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the land of Ephraim, the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field of Ephron the Hittite as a possession for a burial place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah his wife. And there I buried Leah. The field and the cave that is there were purchased from the sons of Heth. And when Jacob had finished commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and breathed his last and was gathered to his people. You may be seated in the presence of the living God. I want to rearrange this subject matter this message with these words my last wish somebody shout back at me my last wish my last wish my last wish as we celebrate the legacy of God's drum major for peace and justice, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., who, by the way, changed his name, had his name changed by his father. Many do not know that Martin Luther was not his birth name. His birth name was Michael King. And his father, who was so impressed as a civil rights leader and influenced by the revolutionary Martin Luther of the Lutheran movement, that he saw fit to change the name of M Michael King Jr. to Martin Luther King. <sighs> my preference for that, my fault for that is I want to encourage us to be careful what we name our children. Amen. Names carry thoughts. And thoughts carry power. Because every time his daddy would say Martin Luther, that reaffirmed in him a certain intestinal fortitude that reminded him of the reformer, the revolutionary, Martin Luther. You've heard me say it before, and I realize that some people look upon it with a frown of dismay. 
because they think that I'm somewhat braggadocious, a bias in my assessment of my pedigree, of my lineage, of my family root. But I take pride in being a tyrant. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. I tell my children all the time, what is your last name? Because to frown upon my last name, to look down upon my last name, to speak evil of my last name, to think ugly of my last name, is in retrospect, amen, a reverse psychological slap in the face to my mother, <laughs> to my daddy, I can't hear no black, to my grandmother, my grandfather, to their parents. And I believe I come from some good stock. What about y'all? I can't help it what someone else did along the lineage to cause poison to, amen, to disrupt the family name. But, but, but for me, I take pride, Sister Evelyn, in being who I am. Because God did not make a mistake when he made me. What about you? When God made you, he didn't make a mistake. My mama used to say all the time, boy, when you go outside, make sure that you don't bring shame to the family name. How many of y'all know there are those with their own lineage that have brought some shame to our family's name? We all have somebody, amen, somebody, yeah, somebody, somebody that, that was raised better in our bloodline, but thought and saw fit to go another way. And it behooves us that are still around with a little silver line threading of amen gray in our head and a little wisdom knocking on our shoulders to remind those who are coming up you be mindful how you carry your name. Amen. Because the Bible says that a good name yeah. is better than rubies mm -hmm. and fine jewel. All I have is my name. Mm -hmm. I can't hear nobody out there. It's something about name, is it not? If it wasn't, then God would not have chosen, yeah, to have certain names for certain biblical characters throughout the Holy Writ. Every name that God gave somebody had a meaning. They just didn't name people to be naming people. Yeah. Every name meant something. Oh, y'all don't believe it did. As a matter of fact, when Mary was born, when Mary, when Mary was, amen, was pregnant before she gave birth to, only begotten, to the only begotten son of the father, the angel appeared unto, yeah. And told, and told the daddy, said, Joe, listen to me, Joe. I know you're a good man, and I know you're trying to figure out how she got pregnant, and you never touched her. But that baby is of the Holy One. And whatever you do, make sure that you name him Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah, he's called Emmanuel because God is with us, but his name has a meaning. Y'all didn't shout right there. Let me try it. I said, there's something about that name. Can I get an amen? amen? There's something about the name of Jesus. Yeah. There's power in the name. Yeah. There's miracles in the name. There's yeah. healing in the name. Yeah. There's amen. Yeah. Victory in that name. Yeah. Ain't God all right? Amen. Why do you think when people come out in sports, amen, every time Ali, amen, would come on the court, he said, when they said Ali, Ali, that gave him a push, a thought. Because he could feel the power of the synergism and the energy of the people. Say my name, say my name, say my name. Something about the name. Somebody say something about that name. But we can't say that with every name. Because a lot of names have no significance, have no real power, no real thought when it comes to the betterment of humanity. And so Dr. King's father saw fit to change his name first to Martin Luther Sr. And then change his son's name to Martin Luther King Jr. So this weekend as we celebrate the life and legacy and the birthday of this giant of a civil rights activist, I wonder, I wonder, does his dream still live on? Some have said yes, it lives on in the hearts of millions. I wonder, I wonder, Brother Wesley, if Michael, uh, uh, Martin Luther King Jr., I want to see if y'all are awake, was still alive, what would be some of his questions? What would be some of his concerns? We ought to be happy. We ought to be shocked because many of us got off from work and got paid and never marched. I can't hear nobody. Many of us, amen, received benefits 
and never was out on the front line. No, many of us never went to jail or suffered the brutality and the travesty of injustice. But our foreparents did and those before us. And we are reaping the benefits of those who stood out and demanded justice. So we ought to be concerned as it relates to the dream of Martin Luther King. You can kill the dreamer, but you can't kill the dream. Amen. And they thought that if we take him out, the movement would be no more. Oh, but how wrong they were. Because when they, when they shot Dr. King, amen, they kept crying for peace. But they gave him a bullet. And when he was taken out, they felt that it was all over. But how many of y'all know? They stirred up something. Amen. And sometimes when the devil tries to take something away from you, he thinks that you're going to be out. Preach, Pastor Talbot. Not yet. I'm teaching. He thinks that when something comes along to take you out, he don't know he doesn't realize, amen, that God is getting ready to stir you up to do a bigger work. Yeah. And Dr. King was taken out, it ignited a fire. And so, uh, and so I believe that he would still address injustice because injustice is still in our land. I believe that Dr. King would entrust the hideous actions of black and brown skilled people whose blood still cries from the ground. Justice, justice, justice. Ahmaud Arbery, I can hear his blood crying out. I, I went out for a daily jog in the neighborhood and was gunned down like an animal by racist white men while black. Amen. Justice! I can hear Brianna tell us that I was sleeping in my bed, had a long night, but I was killed while sleeping in my own home Amen. by police while black. Justice! George Floyd said, I went to a a, a, a five and ten food stop, amen, store, a little store on the corner, and I had a forty twenty dollar bill. I knew it was wrong to have it, but does it mean that I have to be held to the ground with a knee of a police officer on my neck, and I'm crying out, I can't breathe till I die while black. Unarmed, Dante Wright, 20 years of age, was shot by police in his car in Minnesota while driving while black. I believe Dr. King, somebody say Dr. King would have been on the front line protesting and marching and creating strategies in, in a non-violence manner. What do we want? We want justice. And when do we want it? We want it right now. No justice, no peace. I believe, I believe that he would still be on the front line. How many of y'all know we need justice? How many of y'all know that the cry for justice is still real? Oh, yes, it is. Jesus came to bring about peace. For he said, I have been sick. Watch this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has called me to preach the gospel. That's what he said. To heal the brokenhearted. To bring sight to the blind. Amen. Freedom and liberty to those who are bruised. He came to create, to bring about justice for those who have been oppressed by the sin, sin, sick system of Satan. Because Jesus realized that when you're in bondage, you're not free. And in order to be free, you must be freed by Jesus. His dream was for all people. And what was his dream for all people, Brother Rick Cromwell? From the military to the mission. Freedom! Freedom! Let freedom reign. Economic freedom, educational funding, and pay raises and benefits for service workers who are on the front line. Amen. I can't hear nobody. Equal resources and health services for the lower class communities in the poor zip codes in the country. Amen. Where you place food deserts and liquor stores and clubs and slum lords to disrupt and cause depravity within the black and brown skin culture. Amen. And why is it that our blood pressure, amen, and amen, our, sh our sugar, our triglycerides, and so many health issues are facing us? Yes, we love pink feet. Yes, we love brown beans and cornbread. Yes, but in essence, if you really think about it, go on any block in the black community, and you will find nothing but greasy spoons. Amen. Restaurants designed to clog up our arteries and to disrupt our health. When we really need some real resources of health deliverance. 
where we have health resources, where we have educational opportunities and job training for youth. When I arrived in Lexington, they had what was called the Mayor's Job Training Center. But oddly, they had, they had summer jobs. But oddly, oddly, all of a sudden, Sister Kelly, all of a sudden, the resources dry up. Amen. And if you really think about it, I can't hear nobody. If you really think about it, we had less shooting then. Yeah. We had less, I, I, come on, we had micro city. We had so much going on to empower our community. Why? Because when you have some positive in the community, they relate to where we are. It gives us something constructive to do. It gives us something beneficial to do. Could it be, could it be that they're slowly but surely trying to squeeze us out? So that we will become like crabs in a basket where we turn each other down. I can't hear nobody out there. It's good to know that, it's good to know that Dr. King was one who would stand for the rights of our people. Oh yeah, I believe that Dr. King would stand up and say, we need to pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. 2022 H.R. 4, which means to restore and strengthen the right of all races and all genders. And many don't know how discriminatory it is when you have to apply just to vote. When you have to go to the line to vote. I don't care if you're straight or gay. I don't care if you're black or white. I don't care if you're he or she or she he. You still have a right to vote. Hello, somebody. And what John Lewis is saying, we need to restore the rights for all races and all genders where there's non-discriminatory voting rights and procedures. Pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, H.R. 4. Pass it. Somebody say pass it. Yeah, don't treat me funny because I got purple hair and fish and stockings. I can't hear nobody else. Don't treat me funny because I live on a certain time side of town and I don't look like you and don't talk like you. Don't treat me. No, don't mark me off and say I got the wrong idea and switch lanes at the last time when I stand in a long line only to come up to the booth and say, you don't qualify. Ain't God all right. I said, ain't God all right. You ought to think about it. Amen. At one time, we had what was called Sunday polls. Polls. Sunday polls. And that means that we would load up buses and vans on Sunday. You better watch what they're doing. And we would gather and guard our people together on Sundays because that was one of the most pivotal times we could get our people together. And we would get them together. My last wish. We would get them together and we would gather them together and we would go to the polls. Souls to the polls. But then, Sister Jessica, the boys on Capitol Hill said, we're going to change that. Amen. We're going to start creating roadblocks on Sundays. We're going to start changing the voting hours. We're going to start changing the districts and the booths. And we're going to shut things down at a certain time at a certain hour to try to hinder a people of black and brown skin and all gender the right to vote. Somebody shout, I got a right to vote. I got a right to vote. I believe Dr. King would address these and other issues such as critical race theory. Stay, stay sociological with me for a minute. Critical race theory. I believe he would address critical race theory, Sister Nico, which in simple terms is the deep, dark, secret history of the sins of how American racism shaped laws and education and public policy and economics and equality to favor white people over a people of color. <coughs> It's really dealing with our history, the true essence of history. Because they don't teach all true history in Eurocentric educational systems. They teach you what they want you to know in public schools. And that's why HBCUs are so important. And when I stand up here and I talk like this, Brother Sims, I'm looked upon as a Malcolm X. I'm looked upon as making Jesus black. I'm looked upon as being a racist. But no, what I'm trying to do is help my people to think and help my people to research. And if we would come a little closer, I believe everybody that's of black and brown skin can testify to the fact that whether you was a manager or whether you was a service worker or whether you was an education, education, I mean an educator or whether you were in the military, whatever field of service you serve, they still reminded you that you are not one of them. They still reminded you that you are not on our side of the tracks. 
They still didn't treat you fairly. Amen. They still didn't share with you equally. They pulled you in. You went to the little parties. Amen. You, you went and had their hors d'oeuvres. Amen. You were nice. You were kind. You was at work early. You left late. And still you got overlooked. You went the extra miles, you did the extra work, and then when you retired, what did they do with your job? I'll tell you what they did, they broke it down into four sections and money came from nowhere. Why didn't they pay you what they paid four people? Because nobody can do what us can do. There's something about our drive, something about our intestinal fortitude, something, Sister Kelly, about our DNA. We are somebody. And wherever we get into a place, we change it. Give me a basketball, I'll be, that's right, a Dr. J, a Luau Sinner. Give me a basketball, I'll be, amen, a Kobe Bryant, God rest his soul. Give me, give me a tennis racket, I'll be a Venus and a Serena Williams, I'll soar to the top. Give me a camera, I'll be an Oprah Winfrey, become the first billionaire. Y'all don't hear me today. Yeah. If you let me in, I'll be somebody. Give me a strip and a backyard barbecue, and I'll be a Medea and a Tyler Perry. Yeah. And then I'll buy my own studio. Y'all not praying with me. I said, get, let me get, don't, don't let me get in. If I get in, I'm going to soar. And that's why, Sister Evelyn, they don't want us to get in. Because when we get in, we rise and climb to the top. Mm -hmm. Dr. King would have stood. Many activists and freedom fighters had last wishes. Susan King Taylor had a last wish. And that was to be one of the first black women to start a school for poor, slave black girls. She had a last wish. Harry Tubman had a last wish, didn't she? And that was to free black people from slavery. Nat Turner, the Buffalo Soldiers. Oh yeah, the Buffalo Soldiers. The black men that fought, amen, in the Civil War in World War II. And they called them Buffalo Soldiers because they had black hair. And they fought for your freedom and my freedom. And a lot of people don't know that we helped to build America. Amen. Amen. Fair Hamer, who stood up as an activist for the freedom of black women. I came to Rosa Parks, who said, I'm too tired to go to the back of the bus. She wasn't tired because she stood on her feet all day for being a seamstress. She was tired, Nico, of oppression. She was tired of bigotry. She was tired of injustice. And she said, I'm not going back to the back of the sea. And you ought to thank God she got tired. Because her last wish was that one day I can sit in the front of the bus. Her last wish, one day I'll own the bus. One day I can sit where I want to sit at any time I want to sit there. And you ought to thank God every time you get in any type of medium of transportation. I don't care if it's Uber. I don't care if it's Lyft. Y'all not helping me. I don't care if it's a bus. I don't care if it's wheels. If it's even your own car. You ought to thank God for somebody like Rosa Parks. Amen. Who said, I want to ignite civil rights so that all people can have freedom of choice. Let freedom ring. Can't you hear the voices of our ancestors? I can hear mine. I can hear some of their last wishes. I can hear them saying justice and rights. I can hear them saying, we just want to be treated equally. We just want the playing field to be level. Can't you hear them? All men are created equal in the sight of God. Amen. The house you got now, your ancestors died for. Amen. The car that you ride in, the street that you cruise along, the privileges that you have right now, somebody had a last wish that you would have what you have. Amen. That you would be where you are. And you ought to celebrate God for them who sacrificed and gave in order that you can have what you have right now. Amen. Ain't God all right? Amen. My question is not them. My question is, what is your last wish? Don't wait for it later. Enjoy life now. Last wish. It varies. Does it not? Before I tiptoe around the text, I bid you farewell. You're going to get out of here. It varies. Somebody say it varies. Yes, for a six-year-old child Amen. Brain, brain cancer. Her last wish is to be free from cancer. A grandfather's last wish was that his family, he said, before I pass, sneak my favorite beer into the nursing home. Last wish. 20 and 22, what has God already done for you? 
Count your blessings. And the only woman on her deathbed said, my last wish is to see my best friend, Oliver the cat. Because I want to say goodbye. For the homeless man on the brink of death, amen, he wants someone, his last wish is for someone to adopt his sweet dog, baby, before he transitions. For a dying seven-year-old child, his last wish is, let me die so my mother can have my kidney so she can live. What has God done for you in 20 and 22? Count your blessing. Start a charity drive. In some disease in honor of someone dear and near to you in their honor. See a child, my last day, see a child of yours to graduate, get married, go on and raise a happy family. Amen. See, see your first time homeowner in your lineage. I can't hear nobody. See a grandchild graduate and go on and raise Amen. their family. I ask God to allow me to see my baby girl journey, get married and have children. Everybody ought to have some last I just don't get it. Somebody say, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it how some folk never change. The same old, same old. Amen. January of 2022 really meant nothing to some people. It's a new day. It's a new year. But they're still carrying on the same old stuff. Doesn't that aggravate you? Doesn't that annoy you? Amen. To run into people and they're still doing the same old stupid stuff. You get to a place in point, Brother Sim, where you just start backing up. And you limit your phone calls. You limit your attention. Because if you really want to get somebody's attention, don't give them none. Come on, talk to me. How many of y'all know that you cannot appreciate that which is, amen, worthful when you're tuning in to that which is worthless? Tweet that. Hello, somebody. There are some people you got to let go. There's some things you gotta let go. There's some surroundings you gotta let go. There's something. It's not that they're bad people. You're the best. It's not that you are superior. They're inferior. You just outgrew them. Amen. Your season has changed. Come on, somebody. And they're still going around and around and around in circles. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Y'all don't want to talk to me today. I'll talk to myself. How many know down through the years? There's some folks. You just there's some situations. There's some experiences of people you had to write off. There's some people you just have to stop communicating with. There's some folks you just have to narrow down, narrow down. Somebody say narrow down. Narrow down your list. Ain't God all right? Now like I, every now and then it pays to go through your social media because there's some folks you need to delete, 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 delete. I can't hear anybody out there. Sometimes you have to go through, hey man, your Rolodex on your phone and you got to what? Delete, 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 delete because it's time out for living in 21. Somebody shout, I'm done. I'm done. With 21. Yeah. Ain't God all right. I said, ain't God all right. Amen. I don't get it. Somebody shout, I don't get it. As good as God has been to us. Brother Wesley, I don't get it. The same old, same old. Same mentality. Hold on, Malachi, I'm coming. The same old mindset, the same old language, the same old sarcasm, the same old saying, get a life. I don't get it. Somebody say, I don't get it. Still don't care. Still don't give up. Still the care less. Still the unconcerned. Still stuck in their ways. I don't get it. COVID-19 has taken the life 5,446,542 as of January. You missed your shot. Let me rewind. Go right back to it. 5,546,542 5, as of January 2022. You still missed your shot. Let me try one more time. COVID-19 has taken, so I said taken, Google it, the lives of over 5 million, 546, and 542. I can shout right there. I said I can shout right there because God didn't include me in the love. What about you? Some of y'all had COVID not only once but twice and now going on your third time. But God still spared your life. Yeah, yeah. God still gave you another chance. At the top of the list, over 800,000 deaths and climbing America. 
Omicron is spreading rapidly now. It's in warp speed. It's moving so aggressively, they can't even keep up with it. They're checking it every second, every minute, because it's moving so fast. It's a mutiny that develops its own little army. It's like a little circling ball. Every time it picks up one virus, it picks up another germ and another germ. And it keeps on keeping on. And they say, well, if more people would have got vaccinated, it would have this. And if more people would have more vaccinated, it would have this. Yeah, well, maybe. maybe yeah. Because the God I said, I believe since the devil of God that got upset. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that God has allowed it to happen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, I truly believe that. I believe that God is saying, you know what? I am so irritated how arrogant you have become humanity. How selfish you have become humanity. I, I, I'm so irritated. I believe God is saying, you are so stuck on yourself now. And, and there's no change in your behavior. Instead of you seeking me, you seek things for yourself. You don't have no time to worship me. You're not listening to me. You're not praying to me. You're not following me. You develop your own ideologies and your own idol God. And now you think because you're intelligent and you've come this far that you can make an amen on your intellect and your resources and your strength. And God said, well, what I'm going to do is just sneeze. <laughs> and here comes the virus. Now we're all in this thing together. It ain't just on one side of the tracks. Yes, right. Everybody's sniffing and coughing. Everybody's wiping their face. Everybody's using some type of spray. Everybody's trying to guard themselves. Ain't going all right? Yeah, I said everybody. Somebody shout everybody. Yeah. Omicron, COVID-19 is not racial. Yeah. Amen. It doesn't matter if you're black or white, rich or poor. Live on the hill, the bottom of the hill. Amen. Got a Cadillac, got a Volkswagen, motorcycle, a moped, a hoopty. It don't matter. Somebody shout it don't matter. Don't matter. I believe, watch this, God bless you, that in addition to the escalating virus, something else is on the rise. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it appears to me that instead of us getting better, <laughs> we're only getting worse. Instead of us falling down before God, prayer meeting ought to be packed. Churches ought to be packed. Folk ought to be falling down on their knees, crying out to God. But I don't see that. I see it just like you, folk going on about their business. Ain't God all right? I thank God for the faithful few of you that are present and those that are watching online because there's somebody out there that still believe that God is real. Somebody out there still believe that God is able. Somebody out there still believes in the power of prayer. Somebody out there still believe that the church is the best thing in the world. But don't get it twisted. People are dying in other ways. My last wish. Beyond COVID, people are dying. Yeah. Everything is not COVID related. We still have people dying by way of premeditated murder. We still have people dying of sickness. We still have people dying of stress, mental disorders, malpractices, disasters, accidents, wars, the list is endless. So when you fuse it all together, if you ask me, time is winding up instead of winding down. All of us have a bucket list. Last wishes that we want to be on. To carry it out the way that we want it to the T. And from this ancient biblical story, a few thoughts come to mind and I'll bet you'll do. The Bible teaches that you don't just roll the dice with your life. Huh? The Bible teaches that you have to set things in order. And you have to face what needs to be fixed. Amen. Because oftentimes we want to do these spiritual things. Come to church, say our prayer, and then go on back and think it's it. No, baby. No, you've got something to do for yourself. Amen. Amen. And God all right. In this world, you need what is called a living will. I'm going to talk about it. Amen. It's a document that a person specifies what action should be taken for their health, 
if they're no longer able to make decisions for themselves because of illness or incapacity. We call it pulling the plug. I recall Sister Jessica, when my mother got sick, they called me and my sister in and told her, say, it don't look good. And you all need to make some decisions. And they said to us, they said, do y'all have, does she have a living will? We said, your mother's already put some things together. But we can tell you right now, mother does not want to be on push button. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Mama already told us, say, if I get to that place, y'all let me go. I don't want to be on a machine. I don't, when God calls me out of here, I'm ready to go. Ain't God all right? Amen. A living will helps the person in making that decision. Because normally the family will place that on somebody. And that's a weight that somebody has to carry. Wondering did I make the right decision or did I make a wrong decision. But just by the mere fact you have to make the decision is a weight within itself. And now they have a law. They have a law now that's put intact. They'll only allow somebody to be on life support for so many hours, for so many days, because there were those who were leaving people on life support for a long time. And so the government stepped in and health stepped in and the law stepped in and said, no, 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 no. So you need a living will. Somebody say a living will. Not only that, not only that, not only that, but you need a last will and testament. And this is a document that communicates a person's final wishes pertaining to assets and dependence. Ain't God all right? And no, I don't work for a funeral. But it outlines what to do with your possession. And one thing that we as a people of color and others, you know where we mess up? We leave it up to people who ain't got enough sense to do right. I can't hear nobody. And since they don't have enough sense or they're not using the good sense to do right, they take what we've worked so hard yeah, for. Yeah. I can't hear nobody. They take what they take, they take what our ancestors built and what our foreparents built and what mom and dad built and what you built. Don't you know there's somebody sitting around right now waiting for you to drop? So they can wear your shoes, get in your clothes, drive your car, I can't hear nobody, and live in your house. Waiting to receive your benefits. And oftentimes, because we don't have anything in writing, I've seen it with my own eyes. Amen. How families fight, and families tussle, and families argue, and families go back and forth. And right now, today, properties have been lost now and now. Relationships have been torn. Y'all not going to pray with me. And death steps in and snatches family, amen, off the scene. And, and there's no reconciliation. And there they are living with the regret that I should have tried harder to get along. Fighting over stuff. So here it is biblical narrative. And God all right. We have someone that helps us. And I think it's apropos because I'm talking to you. Just because grandmama lived to be 90 don't mean you're going to make it. Put it in writing. Somebody said put it in writing. Everything from your books to your boots. Put it in writing. Everything from your coat to your cup. Put it in writing. Because there are those today, Brother Rick, who have become so selfish that here's what they're doing now. I ain't talking about you. I'm talking about the other person that you know that you met last week. Here's what they're doing now. They are cremating people. Lord have mercy. And taking the proceeds that are left from, that's right, the policy and putting it in their pocket and blowing it in the wind. And that's why cremation is on the rise now. They're finding the cheapest way to put you out of here. And going on with your life. I know it's a shame, isn't it? I know, I, I get it. I know it's, 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 it's low down, is it? But do you not know that when you die, folk do some strange things? Amen. Families do some things. And I know this is a sensitive subject, but thank God for those of you that had a family that stuck together. Yeah. And thank God for those of you whose family did not fight. And thank God for those of you whose family said this is the way they wanted it and this is the way we're going to carry it out. But how many of y'all know that's not everybody's story? Yeah. Yeah. It's not everybody's story. So what are some of your last wishes? Scuba dive? Want to ride a horse? Want to retire debt free? Want to travel to see the seven wonders of the world? 
Huh? What is your last wish? Finish a project? Start a new hobby? Some on death row, they get what is called a last meal. One inmate said, I want to spend my last hours watching the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy. And I want steak and lobster and an apple pie and ice cream and a 7-Up. What are your last wishes? You want to sleep in an igloo? You want to build a house? Run a marathon? A marathon? You want to camp in a sand dune? You want to meet Barack Obama? Write a book? What are your last wishes? Find a home? Find a church home? Jacob says, here are my last wishes. Here y'all for you Bible scholars. Number one, Jacob gathered himself together. Some folk have yet to gather up themselves. How are you going to gather somebody else together when you're not together? So the first thing I see in this aged patriarch, Jacob, he got himself together. He got his thoughts together. He knew what he wanted for his last wishes. How many of y'all know there are some people who are just as unstable as they can be? Amen. Jacob said, I got to clear my mind. I got to get myself together. Because if you don't know what you want, you won't know what you don't want. And when you know what you don't want, you know what you want. Tweet that. So the first thing he did was gather himself together. Somebody say gather himself together. Don't tune me out. I know I'm talking real good. Number two, Jacob gathered up his family. Look at the age picture. Right? He called a family meeting. And what I love about this, Malachi, it's a beautiful picture, Brother Sims, of a father calling his boys together. Yeah, I wish I had time to deal with that. I believe we'd have a better world if we had more fathers and knew how to gather their children together. Amen. I believe we'd have better families if we had fathers that knew how to rally their seed together. <coughs> he gathers all of his boys together, all 12. Somebody say all 12. All 12. Gathers them together, gathers all sons, and he says, Here's, Here it is, boys. I blessed you. I've left all of you on something. But now I want you to honor my last wish. I want all of y'all to hear it. He gathered all of them together. My four walls of my room are getting ready to become the four walls of my grave. I remember Deacon Woodson Johnson said at the Corinthian Missionary Baptist Church one Wednesday. Right in the midst of prayer meeting, it, pl it pays to come to prayer meeting Bible study. He said, the Lord did show me. I ain't got long, y'all. And he started crying. And see, when you walk with God, God will let you see some stuff. Yeah. Wasn't too long after that. Sister Fry and Deacon Woodson Johnson passed on off the scene. Because he knew that his time was winding up. How many of y'all remember them old saints would tell you, I ain't got long, y'all. I can see over the horizon now. What they're trying to tell you is, I'm getting ready to leave. One scholar says that the old patriarch was leaning on his staff. As he leaned over on his staff as an elderly man, he began to talk to his boys walking with his staff. Be careful making fun of old folk. Hello, somebody. As he talks to his boys leaning on his staff, he said, y'all listen to me. My tongue is getting ready to cleave to the roof of my mouth. But before I leave here, here's some things I want y'all to make sure you carry out. So he gathered them together. He tells them, respect and trust what I want you to do. And how many of y'all know you can't turn over your last wishes to everybody? Amen. But he said, here are my last wishes. Be sure to carry them out. As I requested, I feel my help. He says, bury me with my fathers. And then what he said? Don't bury me in Egypt. Because this is not my native land. Jacob is saying, this ain't my home. And I don't know how y'all feel about it, but God is not going to let us be comfortable down here. Because this is not our 
home. Are y'all with me? He said, he said, I'm a Hebrew. And he said, I've already made prearrangements. In other words, I've already purchased my burial site. Bury me with my people. And I contend that Jacob had enough sense to know that when Abraham was buried and when Isaac was buried, his daddy and his granddaddy, he had enough sense to know that one day they would get up again. Y'all missing this. And, he's, and no doubt he thought to himself that when they get up, I want to get up with them. I want to be in that land when they rise. I want to be there. Because Egypt is not where I want my bones to be. This is not my home. And how many of y'all know we're just a pilgrim traveling through a barren land? I'm out of here, y'all. So he gathered himself. Yeah. And then he gathered his family. Y'all say amen. And then the Bible says that in Genesis 49 and 33, that he gathered up his feet amen. into the bed. Which means, Brother Rob, one scholar states that he took the staff that he was holding, that he was leaning on. And in my mind, he took that staff and he laid it to the side. As he laid it to the side, old man Jacob made his way to the bed. He laid down on the cot, told his boys, I'm getting ready to leave you now. The Bible says uh, that when he, yeah, gathered up himself and gathered his family, Lord help me, and told them uh, what his last wishes were. Y'all don't hear me. The Bible says that he gathered up his feet. And what does that mean, preacher? That means uh, that his soul to flight. Ain't God all right? And it went to that land where there'll be no more dying and no more crying. What I love about it, Sister Jessica, I know I gotta go out of here. But here's what helps me, Journey. I pray to the Lord uh, that when I go out of here, that I'm surrounded by somebody that loves me and loves the Lord. Do you hear me? When I fly out of here, that tells me, uh, yeah, that God is going to gather me up and uh, he's going to lift me up. Ain't God all right? I'm going to a place, yeah, where every day will be something. And one day, uh, your soul and my soul is going to have to be gathered up Amen. because of the God to call and ask to answer. My question is, uh, how much more time do we have left before we gather up? We really don't know. You may only have a sentence left in your paragraph. You may only have a common author. You may only have a question mark. But the question is, what are your last wishes? As for me and my last wish, I want to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And somebody else out there is saying, my last wish is when I see Jesus, I'm going to say amen. Somebody else's last wish is, I'm going to walk around heaven. All day in that land called Beulah Land, ain't God all right? In that land, yes, my Lord, where we will, amen, see no more hearse wheels. I'm going to a land, yes, Lord, uh, ain't God all right? I'm going to that country, y'all, ain't God all right? Where we'll never grow old, uh, yeah. But until I go, I want to give God my best. Until I go, I 
want to glorify God until I go. I want to do a greater work. And my question to you is, is that your last wish? If that's your last wish, why don't you help me call his name? His name is Jesus. He said, what would it profit a man to gain the whole world and die and lose their soul? And I thank God that my soul is anchored in the Lord. Ain't God all right? Do you know that your soul is anchored in the Lord? If you know it's anchored in the Lord, uh, give God the glory and give God praise and stand to your feet and, take and say, Thank you, Lord. My soul is anchored. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. Thank you, Lord, how you set me free. Thank you, Lord, for one more chance to get it right. The doors of the church remain open. Let us stand all over the building. My last wish. Somebody's here today. You need a church home. You don't want to go out of here without a church home. Your last wish is that my soul be saved from a burning hell. I want to invite you, my brother and my sister, drop your ego, drop your pride. Start out the first month of the year the right way. And unite with the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do it while the blood is red, running warm in your veins. Oh, hear me today. A church home. If you don't have one, I want to invite you to be a member of the Antioch Church. If you don't want to join this church, just come. I'll send you where you want to go. To get in the kingdom of God. Why you able? It's like A, B, and C. A, acknowledge that you are sinner. B, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And C, Confess with your mouth. If you're willing to do that, I'm going to pray with you now. Father God, we pray for that brother, that sister, whose mind is circulating. And say, I need to make a decision. I've got some last wishes, but the greatest of all my last wishes is to see Jesus in the free part of my sin. Touch them now in Jesus' name I pray. And they all said, Amen. Responded to that prayer, contact us, amen, here at the Antioch Church and be our online disciple, our virtual father. I promise you, the Lord will bless you real good. We're signing off here at the church. God bless you. Have a beautiful day, is my prayer.